In the previous videos, I had shown you how to assemble your filler and also how to sanitize it in separate videos. The links of both are given here. In this video, I'll explain you how to use the pressure filler. I hope that you already know the parts of the pressure filler. If not, then please view the earlier videos that I had posted, which will give you a detailed description of the same. Once I have removed the pressure filler from its box, just before I use the bottle filler, I always flush it with my sanitizer once using my mini keg. I had already cleaned and sanitized my filler after my last use. Now I just need to run my sanitizer once through it before using. The detailed procedure of how I do this is in the link above. In this video, I'll speak to you in detail only about how to use the pressure filler for filling beer bottles. This is how I arrange my workflow for using the counter pressure bottle filler. Starting from number one, where I have my bottles in my bottle tree, I take a bottle and place it on the steel collection tray for filling. Here in this picture, it is a green bottle I'm using. The collection tray will catch any drips or spills, if any. In the second step, I take the filler from its stand, which is the transparent bottle, which is filled with sanitizer and place it inside the beer bottle seen in green next to it. And I fill it up with beer using the bottle filler. In step number three, once the bottle is filled, I keep the filler back in its bottle stand and the filled beer bottle on a tissue which will absorb any spills. In the fourth step, I use my bottle capper to cap my beer bottle Keeping the bottle on the tissue which sorts off also prevents the bottle from slipping while capping. Finally, in the fifth step, the fill bottle is kept away. This is my routine during pressure filling. Using this workflow, your bottling day sails smoothly and you will start enjoying it. Make sure that you have your keg and your CO2 tank to your right side so that you are free to move to the left for capping. The extra long length of the hoses will help you with free movements and you won't feel that you are tethered to these hoses and thus help in aerobics. Of course you can do it in your own way by keeping the keg within the refrigerator. One thing to remember is to chill your bottles and also your keg before transfer. The nearer the temperature towards freezing, the better. Generally cold crashing the keg alone before bottling helps a lot to avoid forming during filling. Your bottles are sanitized and ready for filling. Your keg is cold crashed and pressurized with 10 psi. The pressure should actually be 2 to 3 psi more than the recommended carbonating pressure of the particular form of beer you are transferring to compensate for the loss of carbonation during transfer. This is the setup with my keg and carbon dioxide tank behind me in the right side. The bottles sanitized and kept in the bottling tree in front of me. The bottles will pass through each step as I go, as I showed you in the earlier diagram and finally kept away for storing. The first step is to remove a bottle from my bottling tree and place it on the tray. I am using a transparent beer bottle to show you the demo. Kindly follow each step as it's important. Always use your right hand to both hold and support the bottle filler and also grasp the neck of the bottle. The left hand should be used only for changing the valve directions. This position of your right hand is very important as it will hold the filler in place and also give a downward pressure on the bottle, thus preventing unwarranted splashing of the beer out of the beer bottle during transfer. The right hand should be removed from this position only after you have turned off the carbon dioxide and the beer line pressure completely after filling up the bottle. Let's start by purging the bottle with CO2. To do this, turn the valve to the CO2 line side and wait for 2 to 3 seconds for CO2 to fill up in the bottle. Once the bottle is filled, you can turn off the valve. Now we need to purge the air in the bottle by opening the purge valve. This is basically to increase the volume of CO2 in the bottle. Open the valve and when the bottle has purged, close it again. Let's fill the bottle once more with CO2. 
turn the valve again to the CO2 line side and wait for 2 to 3 seconds for the CO2 to fill up again. Once the bottle is filled, you can turn off the valve. Now we need to once again purge the air in the bottle by opening the purge valve. Thus, you can be sure that your bottle is full of carbon dioxide now and there is no chance of oxidation of air during transfer. Open the valve and when the bottle has purged, close it again. Turn the valve again to the CO2 line side and wait for 2 to 3 seconds for the CO2 to fill up again. All this time make sure that your right hand stays in place gripping both the bottle and the filler together in place for a good airtight seal. Especially in the next step when you fill up the beer, if we loosen the grip you can expect some splashing. So now I open the beer valve. You can see the beer slowly filling up in the bottle. It will stop filling once the pressure in the bottle and the pressure in the keg equalizes to the pressure that you have set. In this case, I have kept it at 10 psi. Now you can see that the beer has stopped filling inside the bottle. We have to reduce the pressure in the bottle to less than that in the keg. For that to happen, we open the pressure release valve this time slowly as we do not want our beer to form. As I told you, only gently release the pressure from the bottle. Here you need patience and do not try to do a fast fill by opening the purge valve fully. Your beer may form and splash out. Once you see the beer has reached the neck of the bottle, you can reduce and stop the beer filling by closing the purge valve. Make sure you don't leave your grip on the bottle filler and the bottle with your right hand as you finally close your beer in valve. Gently take out the bottle filler and keep it in the sanitization bottle. Following which you can cap your bottle and set it aside. Then you can continue with the next bottle and repeat the procedure. I'd like to give you a few take home messages to prevent forming during bottle filling. 